Hey nerdies, it's Kathleen Ims here, and it's time to play more of The Last of Us. Here. Follow me through here. Okay. Do you know where you're going? Never set foot in this place. Oh, great. It's clear. This way. Right behind you. How are you holding up? You don't need to worry about me. All right. Stay close. Okay. Come on. Let's head for those doors. What's this? Oh. Hey. hey, kid. You all right? I'm fine. More clickers. Get out of there! This part, like, always pisses me off every time I play it. Okay, let's do this. Hmm. This might be helpful. I remember this part giving me a lot of trouble. Um, yeah. Dude, where's my, where's that, there was bow and arrow ammo a second ago. Hmm. Let's wait till that guy gets back. I don't think I can get that guy from there. Yes, okay, good. I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna... I'm going to do it this way because this way is going to work better. Would have been better if I had gotten a headshot, but that works. That works. Okay. I don't hear as much activity happening. Hmm. <sighs> Whew. Right. Thank God. You are. Come on. Doors this way. That was so close. We need to get up there. Okay. There. That ladder could work. If he gives me a boost, that will work. Give me a boost. Mm. Here. Come here, boost me up. 
This part makes me so nervous! Every part makes me nervous, but this part makes me really nervous. Okay. Damn. You be quick. You keep a lookout for those things. I know. There's so fucking many of them. Damn it. God damn it. God damn it. God damn it, there's so many of them, dude. Okay, I gotta I gotta go all the way around. Uh Okay. We can do this, nerdies, we can do this. Some supplies. Always good to get supplies. Firefly pendant. Oh, I hate clickers. There's so many of them, dude. Let's get up there. Come on. Oh, I hate this part coming up, dude. I hate it so much. Oh, I hate it so much, dude. This part is painful. Yeah, no shit. You gotta watch your language. Okay, old man. <laughs> Damn. This part is so brutal. This part is so brutal on hard difficulty, dude. Oh, the last time I played this, I played it like 50 times. I've been looking for these boys. Doesn't matter. Grab the gear. God damn it. This is gonna be rough. It's gonna be so rough, dude. Oh good, good, good. Keep your eyes open for anything we can use. See anything? God damn. So what do we do? We hold our ground. Is there any other choice? We die. <sighs> Get ready. God damn it. God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> Let's see how much his aim can suck up here now. Okay. Oh fucking gay. Okay. Get ready.
survived it. Like literally no help, dude. He is like literally no help. He is no help whatsoever, dude. How am I managed to 
do that? I don't know. I don't fucking know. Hey, kid. Yeah. You know, I think we did it. Like we killed all of them? Oh, don't sound so disappointed. <sighs> More like disbelief. Check the bridge. Yeah, that sucked, dude. That sucked. That part fucking sucked, dude. Oh, and I can just hear everyone like, oh, Kathleen, you should have done this. You should have. <sighs> Listen. No infected. No infected. What I tell you? <laughs> All right. Let's I can't right. believe Nolan North is the voice of this dude. <laughs> That's so weird. I mean, the dude that voices Nathan Drake was well, this dude. You handled yourself pretty nice back there. <laughs> I'd say we make a pretty good team. We got lucky. Lucky? No, no. No such thing as luck. Now, you see, I believe that everything happens for a reason. Sure. I do. And I can prove it to you. Now, this winter, that's been especially cruel. A few weeks back, I uh, sent a group of men out nearby town to look for food. Only a few came back. He said that the others had been uh, slaughtered by a crazy man. <laughs> and get this, he's a crazy man traveling with a little girl. You see, everything happens for a reason. Don't get upset. It's not your fault. I'm just a kid. James, lower the gun. No way, David. I'm not gonna let her lower go. Lower the gun. Now give her the medicine. The others won't be happy about this. Yeah, well, that's not your concern. Move the fuck out of the way. You won't survive long out there. I can't protect you. Oh, thanks. Everything comes to the price. He wouldn't have given that protection for free. And Ellie knows it. He would have protected her, sure. Let's get out of here. But for a price. <sighs> so I just kind of wanted to talk about that scene because that scene was incredible. Um, so first of all, Honestly, that's one of the hardest, hardest fights in this game, hands down. Um, I think it might, from my memory of playing this game on a hard difficulty, the last time I played it, um, that might have been one of, like, hands down the hardest fight that you face in the game because there's an onrush of enemies, so many clickers, even a bloater, and you are in this very enclosed area. You can't use stealth. You can't use the skills that you've gained throughout this game. You just have to go through it. You just have to fight and die several times. And if you have not died at least once playing this part of the game, you probably didn't play it on a hard difficulty, on grounded. I encourage you to play it on grounded because you get the full experience, you get the frustration, you get how difficult that scene is. So David, the way he's introduced is perfect. There's so many things I love about this game. I love that they choose Nolan North to do this character because he's very talented. Um, 
he his demeanor the way he approaches ellie is so calm so collected i hated how his ai was so stupid and he didn't help me at all during the boss fight he he just got in my way but what is so terrifying about david is that he went through that whole very stressful fight with the opportunity to let ellie get killed at any moment and he didn't he had a gun during his entire conversation with Ellie and he did not kill her. Because he doesn't want to kill her, he wants to use her. David, in a way, is like an anti-Joel. He mirrors the relationship that Ellie has with Joel. Hear me out for a second, you might be like, whoa, stop it Kathleen, but no, listen. Ellie finds herself uniting with Joel with, Joel, with the goal of survival they both come together to survive to reach a common goal and protect each other through that and when they end up protecting each other they grow closer to each other they grow a bond so through that model we see ellie and her relationship with joel and we almost expect that model to follow through ellie and, and david because he has the opportunity to hurt her. She has the opportunity to hurt, hurt him. If they wanted to, they could have pushed each other into a horde of runners, but they didn't. And so at this climax, at this moment where they're sitting calmly at the fire, David admits that he, his people want to kill Ellie and does so very calmly. He also says that he can protect Ellie. And there's this implication there that l later on, that comes to light later on, the only reason he really wants to protect Ellie is because Ellie, like everything else in David's life, is a resource. David literally sees people as meat. He, he eats people. He sees them as resources. And Ellie is just one of those resources that he can take advantage of. And the darkness of that statement really comes to light as you kind of look more into the plot later on. But I think this, like, this meeting between Ellie and David really makes us even more appreciate the relationship between Ellie and Joel. Because Ellie, she could have ended up with any companion. And especially in this world, the fact that she ended up with Joel was, as David, as David would put it, fate. It's strange that the villain of the story says that everything happens for a reason. Because it's true. The fact that Ellie and Joel ended up together is no coincidence. It was fate. And if Ellie had ended up with someone like David, how would that have shaped her? Food for thought.